All right, we hit record before I have too much time to overanalyze this and not do it and live in a constant state of paralysis initiated by insecurity. Maybe that's my new intro. Oh no. Hi, my name is Grace Hubby. If you did not know now, you know your life is different now. Welcome to another edition of I Watch Way Too Much Reality Television and I Need Someone to Talk To About It, the working title of this series. Last week I started talking to you about all the reality TV shows I watched and it was very fun for me. It was not fun for some of you and you know what? I don't care. I don't. So we're gonna keep going with it. And I hope that maybe you eventually find something that you enjoy about this because I really like this. I guess to feel happiness, you should pursue the things that you enjoy doing that provide you some sense of fulfillment. I read it on a bumper sticker. So let's talk about reality television. I took notes. <laughs> What a dork. Last week I talked about Bachelor in Paradise and Are You the One. This week I'm gonna talk about those two and then we're gonna talk about some other shows that I've been watching because I watch all of them. All of them. Oh, I watch all of them. And I'm gonna try and go a little quicker than we did last week, but meh, meh, eh, meh, eh. you get it. Let's talk about Southern Charm. It's a reality TV show about a bunch of charming Southerners. It's on Bravo. They live in Charleston. Do they live in Charleston? They live somewhere where there's like fox hunting and unironic duck hunting without a Nintendo. They eat grits, they own silverware that's actually silver. They got traditional morals and modern mistakes. Oh, did I just write a tagline? God, I'm depressingly great at this. My quick thoughts on this season so far. Chef is a petty little bitch this season. Oh, I don't know what kind of drinking game they play in the South, but ah, uh, he ended up with a stick up his ass. Chef's always fun. He's got Peter Pan syndrome. He never wants to grow up. He never wants to settle down. And it seems like it's making him less happy Happy go lucky and more bitter go off on everyone. It's getting real testy with everyone. And now it's just like annoying to watch. Oh, but he did get a little French bulldog and that helps his image. That's a likable accessory. But he did name it after his friend that he picks on all the time named Craig. He cannot not be petty. Craig is an interesting character because he's clearly spiraling from a breakup with his girlfriend of a few years that is now in a really great new relationship. Craig to me is like if a grandmother decided that she wanted to rush a fraternity. He drinks a lot and he makes pillows, which I can see as my future. He found a passion for making pillows and now he's trying to make that a business, which is hard to watch. The pillows look like pillows, but it'd be like if I, based on my cooking videos, was like, I'm gonna go become a Michelin chef. I'm not gonna go to school for it. I'm not gonna do any training. My skill sets are pretty perfect right now. That'd be very hard to watch. Oh, Candace, who's like the, the mom of the group in a way and now is an actual mom, she just had a kid, she just openly talks about how much motherhood sucks and I'm really here for it. I think it's real fun to watch Candace be candid about the joys of motherhood being fucking miserable. I love it. Ashley is back and Ashley's like this spastic malfunctioning fashion Furby. I don't like it. It's like when you watch a chihuahua in any temperature that's not a hundred degrees and you're just like, it's gonna break. That's how I feel every time Ashley comes on the scene. Okay, those are my quick thoughts about Southern Charm. Next! Oh, 90 Day Fiance. This is a TLC franchise. If you guys haven't heard, highly recommend. Basically, 90 Day Fiance, for those that don't know, is based on the K-1 visa. So people in the United States, if they find love overseas, they can apply for this K-1 visa, which means that their significant other comes to the United States and then they have 90 days to get married and then get the green card or something, I don't. But they've expanded this franchise because it's done so well to before the 90 days and after the 90 days. And it's just a carousel of cluster fuckery constantly. I can't even keep up with it. And that's coming from me who makes time to keep up with all of it. I hardly call my parents, but I know the parenting skills of everyone on these reality television programs. I'm fine with it if I don't think about it. 90 Day Fiance should also be called 90 Day Divorcee. The logline for 90 Day Fiance is basically everyone is fucked. They also recently started doing 90 Day Fiance the other way, which means Americans go to the respective countries of their significant others for 90 days or something. I don't know the full logistics of that one, but it's crazy. Everyone's having a bad time. No one is thriving. <laughs> Laura's this like middle-aged American woman and she's got a lover in Qatar that she went to see and she brought like a vibrator with her to spice up their bedroom because apparently he's not good at pleasuring her and she's made it clear on television. He got very upset and I got to watch it happen. Oh, Karini and Paul have been on basically every version of the 90 Day Fiance franchise and now they're on 90 Day 
fiance the other way. Paul is trying to live in Karini's small village town and Karini is pregnant with their child, which Paul doesn't fully believe. He thinks that she's cheated on her, but Paul is a certified lunatic. He has arson on his record because his ex-girlfriend cheated on him. And now he applied for a citizenship in this new country and they've denied it because they've called him a terrorist. He is not happy. And you know what he did? He ran into the backyard and locked himself in a chicken coop. You need a job, kiss a baby. I just cannot deal with it anymore. Oh. Paul has the emotional tools to maintain an adult relationship in a foreign country with a baby on the way. Yikes! It's a goddamn mess and I can't stop looking at it. There's so much to say about 90 Day Fiance, I'm not gonna get too much more into it. Let me know what you guys think about this season if you're watching. Real Housewives of Orange County started the original Real Housewives franchise. Don't know how I feel about this season, it started off a little tame, but uh, it promises to get spicy. Who have I become? Vicky, who is the original OG housewife of all the housewives, is not a housewife this season. She's been demoted to friends, so she's not in the opening credits. Wow! Vicky is tough to watch for me. You know those stress balls that have the eyes on them and when you squeeze them, the eyes pop out? She does that a lot. She's also super religious and believes in Jesus, which makes sense because Jesus also ran around telling people a lot of lies and then just sort of ran away from all the conflict and hasn't come back. He'll forgive her for accusing a mother of having a coke problem and causing uh, irreparable damages to her family name and her young daughter. Ooh! Then there's a girl named Bronwyn who's on this season. She's got like a ton of kids and her mom has like rainbow colored dreadlocks. So a wild season indeed. Vicky and Kelly are at odds, which makes sense. They're both like manic people that will stab you in the back with words. And then when you're like, ow, like there's an actual knife in my back. They're like, you walked into me. I was holding it, yes, and I like, had it at the right angle to stab you, but you you walked into it. You walked into it. I Everyone holds knives in front of them like that all the time. So that's real fun. Ooh, Married at First Sight, super into Married at First Sight. Married at First Sight is exactly what it sounds like. Three professionals, a pastor, a sociologist, and a sexologist pair up people and then they meet each other uh, at their wedding day. Uh, when they walk down the aisle and they get married at first sight. It's a social experiment for six weeks where they live together and they see if the marriage works out or if they want a divorce at the end of the six weeks. And this season does not look promising. I feel like I'm watching a bunch of like kids at band camp play house together. I have very low hopes that any of them are going to make it. One girl's a virgin and she's married to what seems like the nicest guy that I've ever seen on a reality television program and is finally admitting that he's having a hard time being married to a woman that's a virgin because that's a lot of pressure and that's a very human feeling. I feel for him. Another couple is like a very emotionally unavailable basketball player and like a very tiny school teacher. It's, spoiler alert, not going well. He like doesn't stay at the apartment that they're supposed to stay in and then she cries a lot and records herself crying. It's very internet. But he's like a basketball player that plays like internationally, I guess, and it's very fun to watch him try to talk to the, the therapists and such because he does it like he's doing like a post game interview. They're like, you can't leave someone that has abandonment issues. And he's like, I'm doing my best. So I'll try harder next time. Um, that is something I have to work on. And yeah, um, it didn't work out today, but you know, I'm not gonna give up. It is so weird. Also, there's a couple where the girl hasn't dated anyone in 10 years and the guy's clearly into her, but she's got walls up and it's like watching two like Disney characters, like, but one's kind of horny and one is is not. And then there's a couple that could make it or could absolutely ruin each other's lives. They're kind of floppy sloppy all over the place. One girl's like super spiritual into crystals, has like a very intense close relationship with her dad to the point that on her wedding day, her dad was like, he's taking my daughter and my love. And I oh she's, she's my love. It's like a little like Electra complexy. Cool. And then the other guy is just like apparently a horn dog that keeps giving her like UTIs because he wants to fuck all the time. It's all over the map. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm gonna keep watching. Also, my favorite thing about that show is the interlude music that they play in between scenes. It's always just like royalty free, like it's gonna happen for you. Or like you thought I was the one.
on at night when we saw the sun. It is the dumbest music ever. Please go find it and listen to it. Are you the one on MTV? Some of you wanted me to explain this show. It's hard to explain. It's basically more experts pick all of these people to live in a house and they've paired them up where they each have a perfect match that's residing in the house with them. And through the course of the season, they all have to try and match up and find their perfect one. And if they all match up with their perfect ones as allotted by these experts, they all split a million dollars. But now it's getting down to the wire where they only have a couple weeks left and they could go home empty handed if they don't figure this out. Danny did what Danny does best. He did some statistics, some math, and he started to figure out just based on probability where the perfect matches are. And turns out Jasmine and Noor are a perfect match, which is bonkers because the episode before Noor was stabbing a balloon instead of punching Jasmine in the face. And so apparently that's flirting now that we know that they're a perfect match. That, that was foreplay. Also at one point during the episode, Danny quoted a uh, Beckett to Kai, which might be the most intelligent thing anyone's ever said on MTV, in the history of MTV. <laughs> and now they're at the beam ceremony where they feel like they finally have like a, a handle on like where they all lie with each other. Every time they have a beam ceremony where they try and guess and see how many perfect matches they have, Everyone dresses like a different Spice Girl. Like every single person could be a Spice Girl. Except for Danny, he dresses like an IT guy. But it's part of his brand! Oh, and then we're gonna find out via this ceremony if Justin and Max are an actual couple. Max is freaking the fuck out if they aren't. Which is bonkers to me because you just figure out your perfect couple and then fuck each other after the show. <laughs> this isn't a binding. We're not talking uh, Married at First Sight here, guys. Bachelor in Paradise! Oh, man. Two guys got sent home because they started punching each other over a pinata. Oddly, it was like a very symbolic reflection of like the state of the world right now, which makes me sad. Also, I realized that this entire season is just one long commercial for Stagecoach and condoms. If Jed isn't performing at Stagecoach next year, they're really missing out. Also, does JPJ have like an actual medical like gag reflex that we should be like concerned about. He keeps spitting up and coughing up a lot of stuff. Oh, Christina and Caitlin went to have a conversation because Christina keeps like weaseling her way into the Blake situation as just friends. But one of the funniest, bitchiest girl moves of all time is when they were walking away to have their conversation. Christina just looked her up and down and said, oh, I like your shorts. She will talk about you, Caitlin. Oh, is that so? I'm going to go talk to her. I like your shorts, by the way. Thank you. That's basically taking off a white glove and slapping someone in the face with it before a duel. And then in this conversation, they were talking about Blake and how she keeps kind of like cock blocking him from exploring relationships with other people. And then Christina got very defensive about if he wants to give her a friendship rose, he could. And then they kept saying friendship rose over and over again. I felt like I was watching like two Catholic schoolgirls talk about their virginity. It was uncomfortable and I tuned out. <laughs> and then Demi has been having this like moral dilemma because she was dating a girl before this show started and she talked to Chris Harrison about it who is the master puppeteer of all of this and then they brought Christian, the girl she was dating, to the beach and she chose her over Derek that she had been spending all of her canoodling time with. And now Christian is staying at the beach for the rest of the season with Demi. Turns out this show is an Outback Steakhouse. There are no rules. I think that's great for Demi, but also now anything can happen. I hope one of them goes up to Chris Harrison and is like, you know what, I miss my dog. I had a really great relationship with my dog before this season started, so we could get Goose here. Also, I miss my phone. If we could get my phone here, because I, I heard that there's no rules anymore. I heard we're all just sequestered here until Stagecoach next spring, and then we'll be set free. Great. <laughs> oh, and then Nicole wrote a song for Clay that I want to forget about a lot. Well, there you go. There are some of my random thoughts about reality TV this week. Leave comments down below on what your thoughts have been, what shows you want me to watch or comment on that I haven't already. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I make videos. Other than that, I don't know. Does the pool get cleaned? Because there's a lot of like... Hmm.